This is Twit. Now, of course, uh, we, we know each other because uh, we've both worked at Sun Microsystems. We've both been involved in Open Solaris. We've even both been involved in uh, Illumos. Um, n- our listeners don't know anything about that. So could, perhaps you could introduce yourself and NanoMessage. Could you do that for me? Right. Right. So, I mean, I have probably a little bit more notoriety from Illumos, but uh, uh, lately it's been more around this other project called NanoMessage. So, uh, yeah, and we do have some shared history, don't we, Simon? Um, so, uh, NanoMessage is, uh, if your, your listeners or viewers may be more familiar with uh, uh, another uh, project called ZeroMQ. Uh, NanoMessage was a follow-on project uh, in, a, in an attempt to um, create something like zero MQ, but learning from the lessons. You know, every time we go and write a project, every I think every developer goes through this. They 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 make something and then they learn a lot, and uh, then they want to do it. They want to do it over. Well, Martin, the original author of of zero MQ, did that with Nano Message, and what Nano Message is is. Uh, uh, for lack of a better term, it's a sub- messaging substrate um, that helps create a lot of simple patterns that come up over and over and over again in uh, solving messaging problems and distributed computing problems. Right, right. And uh, the nano message was forked from zero MQ. Is that correct? That's not quite really. I mean, a fork would would, would imply a, a shared ancestry in terms of actual code. Um, there's a, a shared ancestry in terms of ideology and even uh, authorship, but the actual code, there's no common code. For example, uh, ZeroMQ is completely written in C++ and uh, carries a uh, GPL-ish license. I, I don't remember whether it's LGPL3 or – that's ZeroMQ. Uh, NanoMessage was written in C with a completely different set of internals um, and a, uh, a more liberal license. Uh, right. So, uh, so this was more of a community fork, where a group of people deciding that zero MQ wasn't their future and they needed to develop something else. Well, I think I think what Martin wanted to do was he wanted um, to be able to use the something like zero MQ in some different different scenarios where the combination and know, and I know this is how I was drawn to Nano Message was I had experience with zero MQ. And I wanted to be able to use something like that in contexts where C++ was not appropriate um, or contexts uh, where actually the licensing was uh, challenging, uh, uh, particularly, you know, even mixing with other open source licenses, there's a, a stickly uh, surface of compatibility around GPL um, and never mind, you know, proprietary projects. And I had, you know, I had a startup where I was working on some proprietary code, and I needed, I needed something like this. And Nano Message really appealed to me. Um, and my my background here was that I joined, wanting to wanting also to build a a cloud orchestration layer. We didn't call it back that call it that back then, um, but I was also wanted to do it on a Lumos, and I wanted to use. Um, uh, Go and at the time Go wasn't uh, the uh, the uh, Cgo support wasn't wasn't available on Illumos, so I needed a pure Go implementation. So I wound up writing an alternate implementation of the same protocols that are a Nano Message called Mangos, and that's how I got started in the whole the whole thing. Right. 